I've been asked many times, how do you simplify a reference photo and make a line drawing that's suitable for painting in watercolour? How do you know what detail to include and what to leave out? In this video, I've got some tips for you on how to do that. And I'll share my thought process that went into doing the line drawings for some of my own paintings. Before I start, each of us have our own unique approach to painting. Some of us prefer to work with highly detailed drawings while others just need minimal lines to get their paintings done. I find myself somewhere in between. My aim is to capture realism, yet I also love watercolour's distinctive look. I like my painting to look like a watercolour painting. So I try to strike a balance, giving my drawing a degree of freedom while maintaining the essence of a watercolour painting. So in this video, you'll see my approach. And as a side note, you'll see me using Photoshop to speed things up. So you don't have to sit and watch me physically draw. But I don't use Photoshop when I make my line drawings. Now, the line drawing is important because it acts as the framework for your painting. It's not something you want to get wrong either because watercolour is transparent and you can't cover your mistakes. When you first start your watercolour journey, knowing what to include in your line drawing and what to leave out can be confusing. So here are a few tips that might help you. The first thing I do before I start drawing is to plan how I'm going to paint my watercolour. Whether I'm using a reference photo or painting from life, I think about how I'm going to complete the painting. I think about things like where my focal point will be because that's going to anchor my composition. I need to have some lines drawn that represent the focal point. I also think about areas that will be painted more loosely, areas where I might work wet on wet. And in those areas, I don't need many pencil lines because I don't want the lines to inhibit the loose work that I might want to do with my brush. After I've mentally painted my painting, then I start to draw all the lines that I think I'll need. One thing that might help you simplify your subject is to identify key shapes. The key shapes form the structural framework on which you will build the whole painting. You can see them better when you squint your eyes and make everything blurry. Here, the negative space of the sky forms a key shape. The cast shadows on the columns are other key shapes, as well as the columns themselves. When I did the drawing for this duck painting, I simplified the reflection into one large shape because I thought about how I would paint that area and I decided that I didn't need all of the feather detail that I could see in the reflection. I thought I would work wet on wet in that area and any detail I included on the drawing would have hindered the flow of the wet on wet work. When you work wet on wet, you won't have precise control the paint flows over the wet paper, creating beautiful and sometimes unpredictable shapes. So it's best not to have pencil lines showing that will inhibit that freedom. Going back to the reference photo, with this area here on the side of the duck, I didn't include any feather detail in the line drawing. I decided that I would add detail on the wing feathers, so I knew that area should be simpler. I also wanted the side of the duck to look soft, which meant I wouldn't need too many hard edges there. To give the illusion of softness, I worked the watercolour paint wet on wet again, and any pencil lines that I drew in there would have hindered the spontaneous flow of the wet on wet work. Okay, so for me, planning my painting before I even think about doing a line drawing is important. That thinking that I do before makes it easier for me to decide what I need to draw and what I can leave off. Another thing I do is I ask myself, what is it about this particular subject that you are attracted to? What caught my eye? What made me think, wow, I need to paint that? Recently, I painted this Eastern Rosella. Initially, what attracted me were the beautiful, vibrant colours but I was also attracted to the contrasting black areas on the wing feathers. Let me walk you through my thought process when I did the line drawing. To do my painting, I'm going to need the outer edges of the bird, 
and also the line of the front wing. I'll need the beak and the sear above the beak and also the edge where the white feathers meet the red feathers. I need this front edge and I wondered if I would leave some lost edges there when I did my painting so I didn't draw the entire front edge in. I needed the feet This soft area along the bottom I left off. I decided it would be better if I did a few flicks of my brush there and I didn't want to be constrained with pencil lines. I needed the tail feathers and the edge of the body feathers where they meet the tail. I drew the edge where the red feathers touch the top of the wing and I also thought I'd paint in these feathers in front of the flight feathers. Then I knew I'd need a line along here where the yellow feathers meet the blue feathers. Now because the black markings on the wing feathers attracted my attention, I wanted to include them on my painting. And I knew that if I didn't draw them in as accurately as I could, then when I started painting I could potentially get in a mess with the black paint. So I carefully included these markings on my line drawing. And then of course I included the eye because I knew I need to position that correctly as well. And I also included these flight feathers here. So here you can see the lines that I felt I needed for my painting. Here's another example of a recent painting. And there's a lot going on with this guinea fowl. It's got a lot of wrinkles and detail. And it can be daunting to look at it. And you might think, Ugh, where do I start? So this is how I would attack it. I need the outer edges. I don't even have to think about that. I'll need the shape of the beak as well, the top beak and the bottom beak. I'll need the red area and the wattle. I also need the nostril. So I draw that in as well. Then I looked at it and I thought, I need this dark blue shape here. So I drew the edge of that in as well. And I knew I was going to keep the attention up near the head. I wasn't going to do much with the feathers on the body, so I didn't need much there. Then of course, I needed the shape of the eye. This was an online tutorial that I made, so I also included the outer edge around the eye and the pupil inside the eye. Perhaps if I was just painting it for myself, I would have left the pupil off and the detail in the eye and I would have just drawn the outer shape. There's a little ear hole here and I needed to position that in the right place, so I drew that in as well. I decided that I would need the line where the horn meets the head, so I drew in that edge as well. Then I had to think about the skin. How was I going to paint all those wrinkles? Did I want any lines to follow or would I feel comfortable painting that area without any guidelines? I decided to draw in just a few. That would help me when I first started adding detail to this area. And then from there, I thought I would paint freehand without having to conform to pencil lines. And I thought the same thing with the dark blue area as well. I just drew a few lines in here and there just to get the direction right. And I thought that will do. I can do the rest with my brush. And there are all the lines I felt I needed to be able to do my painting. Notice I left out the spiky feathers on the back of the head. That's because they were best suited for freehand painting without the limitations of pencil lines. When I was happy with my line drawing, I transferred it to my watercolour paper and then I started to wash in all the blue areas. I worked wet on wet and I also charged in some cobalt turquoise light for interest. Down the bottom here, I didn't need any pencil lines apart from an indication of that outer edge because I knew I was going to work fairly loosely here and I didn't need anything to follow. This is the wrinkled area where I drew in a few guidelines to help get me started 
And then when they were painted in, I was able to paint the rest of that area without any pencil lines. So here I'm starting to paint without the guidelines. And if I feel I need any more guidelines at this stage, I can always draw them in over the top of that dried wash. Here is where I started to paint in the spiky feathers on the back of the head. I turned my board upside down because it's easier to pull strokes like this towards yourself. You can see that there are no guidelines there because I knew if I drew any pencil lines there, it would restrict the movement of my brush if I was trying to follow them. Okay, moving away from the birds now, here's a photo of a cow in some water that I took. The cow is quite straightforward, but there's all the grass in the background and there's the reflections and ripples in the water that I have to think about. What do I want to include in my painting? What do I want to leave out? These are the decisions that I have to make when I do my line drawing. The first thing is the water line. Where does the water finish and the grass start? I need a line for that. I decided that I didn't need the ibis in the background, so I left that off. The second thing is the cow itself. That's my focal point, so I need to draw the outline of the cow. And I need to make sure the shape of it is correct. Now I need to draw all the black markings. I could paint them in freehand without any drawing, but the shape of them is fairly important because they help to define the form of the cow. They follow the shape of the cow. I don't want to get the shape wrong, so I decided to draw them in. I also needed the eye and the nose. And there are a few extra spots there as well. I drew in the front of the leg there as well. And there's a couple of spots behind that leg just here. Again, they follow the shape of the cow, so I wanted to get them right. Now the reflection. How was I going to paint that? I had to think about it. I decided that I would probably use a big brush to stop myself from getting lost in all that detail. And if I was going to use a big brush, I knew that I needed a simple outline of the shape of the reflection. Okay, I've got my reflection there now. When you paint in watercolour, before you start, you need to determine the areas where you will reserve the white of the paper. On this photo, I could see that I needed to reserve those white ripples around the cow's front leg. So I drew them in. And that's about all I needed to do my painting. The water I would paint loosely on wet paper most likely, and I thought I'd do the same thing on the grasses. Let's get rid of the reference photo so we can see the line drawing. And there it is. I've simplified it. I've eliminated all of the things that I won't need to do the painting. This is the actual line drawing that I made and I transferred this onto my watercolour paper. And here is the finished painting that I did from that line drawing. Most of the work in the water was done wet on wet, apart from the reflection of the cow. And the background where the grasses are, that was painted wet on wet as well. So I didn't need any guidelines to follow with those areas. I put simple lines in for the edge of the reflection of the cow in the water because I wanted something to follow there. As I said, I used a large brush to stop myself from fussing and getting lost in the detail. Okay, so planning before you start your painting is super important. And the other thing to think about is what initially drew you to the subject. That area will probably need some guidelines to follow. Try to simplify if you can to avoid constraining your creative flow. Sometimes you want that brush to dance over the paper freely. I know we all paint differently and we've all got different methods. Hopefully what I've shared in this video will help you develop your own method. All of the paintings I showed you are available or will be available soon as full length tutorials. Head to my website for information about my online classes. I'll put a link in the description. 
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Does the little man change positions? No. Yeah. <laughs> it's acceptable? Yeah. Should I do it again? Yeah. Well, was it just mediocre? Fix your shirt. Was it mediocre? Yeah, it's good. Oh, will I do it again, Carl? Yeah. Loan drawings. Can you start from back? I need to have some line drawings. Shall I start again? Ugh. Oh.